On this channel we have taken a look at a whole lot of weird and wonderful engines, from a tiny 10 kg 3 piston engine all the way to a 15 litre hydrogen powered Cummins truck engine. It's fair to say we have seen some interesting stuff. Well today is no different, today we are taking a look at the quasi turbine rotary engine. Now the basic idea of the quasi turbine is that it's yet another rotary, but with a twist. This is a 4 stroke engine, like most modern engines we have today, with intake, compression, combustion and exhaust, but it's the rotor itself that is the weird addition. You see, most rotaries have a solid rotor in the middle. They might have different shapes, but each rotor keeps its own shape. Mazda's Dorito rotary is a triangle, the Omega 1 has circles with a small ledge, and Liquid Pistons X engines have an oval rotor. Well, this engine's rotor has four sides and it can move. It's, it's difficult to explain, just take a look at it. The idea of this rotary, like most of the other ones we have taken a look at, is making an engine that can lower emissions, be more efficient and produce more power per kilogram, so it can be fueled by any spark ignited fuel such as e-fuels, hydrogen and even propane. In other words, it's designed with our carbon footprint kept in mind. So how does it work? Well, the quasi-turbine engine has none of the intricate parts of a typical piston engine like a crankshaft, valves, pistons, pushrods, rockets or cams. It works like a rotary, like I said before. The rotor rotates inside of the engine housing and in the middle of the rotor you'll find the output shaft, which will turn the gearbox. The housing also contains an intake port and exhaust port and a port for the spark plug. Now this weird rotor is made out of four blades which replace the pistons of a typical internal combustion engine. As the rotor blades turn, the volume of the chambers enlarge or shrink. This is how they create compression in the engine. So the air goes in the inlet, the air gets mixed with fuel, the rotor turns, compresses the air. As the mixture is compressed, a spark ignites the mixture, which pushes the rotor. Around and around it goes. Simple. However, unlike a typical 4-stroke engine, as soon as one combustion stroke is ending, the next is ready to fire. This means that in one revolution of the rotor, four power strokes are created. The result is continuous combustion, just like airplane gas turbine engines. And that's where the name comes from. So what are the benefits according to its creators? Well, they claim that this engine is able to burn fuel more efficiently than any other type of engine, which is a bold statement. But here's the cool thing. So, like I said previously, the engine is designed with hydrogen in mind. Now, burning hydrogen releases water vapor and nitro oxide. But this unique engine's architecture minimizes the formation of pollution-related engine products. Consequently, the chemical reaction that leads to the formation of the oxides of nitrogen is retarded or prevented. I mean, I've read full articles and papers on this design and most conclude that this engine design is great. So why aren't we using it if it's that good? Well, I really don't know. Um, here's the thing, most of the info on this engine is almost 20 years old. You see, the other engines that we have looked at on this channel are all mostly new designs that are still in their infancy, whereas this design was designed and shown almost 20 years ago. I mean, the patent was filed in 1996 and the first working engine was shown in a go-kart in 2004. So what happened? Well, here is my take. Similar to the coaxial engine, the idea by the engines are really cool, but because there's a lack of investment, the engines can't be developed and tested properly. And because they aren't proven and tested, people won't invest. So it's a vicious cycle. Another thing that bothers me is the longevity of the engine. Rotaries destroy themselves over time because of the friction. Now some companies get around this, like with Liquid Pistons X engines, they have a way for you to lubricate the seals. In this engine, I didn't see any way for you to lubricate it or any way of them describing how they're gonna maximize the longevity of the engine. So I think that's something a lot of people worried about and they just like never developed it further. So yeah. In conclusion, I think this is a great idea, but because there wasn't a huge push behind making this tech viable, the people behind it kind of gave up and it just never happened. But let me know down below what's your take on this whole thing. Why do you think it just never came into fruition? Now if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I make videos on anything cars, I love cars, I build cars, I talk about engines, I talk about new cars, like if it's car related, it's gonna be on this channel. So I'll check you guys in the next one, cheers eh.